Well, I, I want to welcome all of you here. I want to thank you for coming. Uh, it's a wonderful day for us. It's been many years. Uh, the building is finally finished. Uh, we've got tenants in the apartments. We're going to show you some apartments on the seventh floor when we get done. We have a fitness room in the basement, so you should feel free to go down and look at that in the basement. Um, we've got 55 apartments, 11 are affordable. Um, it's, it's been quite a, quite a journey, as many of you know, because you've been on it with us. Uh, so thank you for being here. Uh, this space is going to be a co-working space for our tenants. It's not quite finished yet, uh, but we're gonna, it's gonna be available for tenants who are working from home but don't wanna be in their apartment. And we think it should be a very attractive thing for people uh, over time. Um, that after we're finished, <clears throat> the seventh floor will have some apartments open, so you're welcome to go up and look, and also into the basement. Uh, to kick things off, I'd like to recognize the mayor, Robert Sullivan, to say a few words. Well, first of all, I want to, uh, I want to welcome you all here to the City of Champions, Brockton, Mass. I want to thank Ted Carmen and his team at Concord Square Planning and Development. They, uh, many years ago, they saw uh, Brockton as an opportunity where a lot of people didn't. The transit-oriented development, I mean, the train's right over there. So to be able to harness some architectural gems here in the city of Brockton, some really historic buildings. This is the Anglin Building, which is the largest, uh, tallest building here in the city of Brockton. And when you go up to the top floor, you'll actually be able to see the skyline of, of, of the city of Boston. So I want to, first of all, just thank everybody for being here. I want to thank Ted. I want to thank all the elected officials. Uh, you'll be hearing from the Council President Moses Rodriguez, but we have City Council Jack Lally here today. We have City Council Jeff Thompson, City Council Susan DeCastro, State Rep Michelle Dubois, State Rep Jerry Cassidy. Uh, there's just so many people. It takes uh, a team to be able to realize today. And today is a historic day in the city of Brockton. Um, when you think about Brockton, you don't necessarily think about jumping on a train and getting into South Station in 35 minutes, right? Or jumping in a car and getting to Providence, Rhode Island at about the same time. So I, I wanna thank Ted. Ted has been phenomenal to work with, but I also wanna thank all the developers. Yeah, thank you, Council, yeah. So I, uh, I said this uh, when we were here a year and a half ago, um, maybe even two years ago. I think a year and a half ago we took a tour with Congressman Lynch, but um, I always find it so rewarding because when we do ribbon or groundbreakings, we always see other developers here supporting Ted, you know, and, and Ted does the same. So it really isn't a competition. It's about developers understanding working together, we can achieve great, great things here in the city of Brockton. We have achieved a lot. We will continue to achieve much more in the years to come. But today, I wanna to thank all of you for understanding that Brockton is a special place with special people. We're an inclusive, welcoming, diverse city. They call us the city of champions. It's the people that are the champions, right? It really is. I wanna thank NBC10 for being here today as well. But at the end of the day, uh, as mayor, I'm just so proud to be able to come to a ribbon cutting because again, this is an opportunity for people to either relocate downtown uh, or come to Brockton, right? The price point is real and you can come here and get some really great value and with the housing is gonna come all the other amenities, right? If you build it, they will come. So right now, I just wanna give an official citation to Ted Carmen as the mayor of Brockton. I wanna extend his, my congratulations to Mr. Ted Carmen. Concord Square Planning and Development, Inc., in recognition of your commitment to our city's transit-oriented development and the restoration of our beautiful historic buildings here in the city. Congratulations, Ted, and your team on the opening of the Angle. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation to you as a symbol of my appreciation, but it's our collective appreciation, and I proudly sign it today, the 26th day of March in the year 2024, Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton. Ted, thank you. this time, uh, former mayor and city council president, Moses Rodriguez. Mr. President. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ted, I didn't bring a citation. But what I did, I brought the hand to honor another fellow Navy veteran, Jeff. So I hope this serves. 
but yeah. kind of the same purpose. So you know, the mayor is a, you know, he's the big cheese. He brought the citation. The rest of us just brought the hat. Uh, but I just saw a couple more uh, folks come in. Our uh, state rep, uh, Rita, uh, Rita Mendez, is here. Uh, another council at large, David Texera, is also here. But as the mayor said, uh, Ted, we are honored to be in this facility. For some of us that have lived in this city for a long time, we remember what this building looked like. And I don't want to call it a dump, but it was a dump. Um, and it was almost an embarrassment because this is, this is probably the tallest building that we have in the city, at least in the downtown area. And it, the way it looked, um, it, it didn't do justice to this community. So uh, the fact that you came here and you believed in this city and you trusted the, uh, the, the folks that help uh, run this city, and the fact that you invested your hard-earned funds in the city is something that we are all proud of, and we will continue to do what we can to make sure that this becomes a success story as other buildings in this community has done. So thank you for inviting us. Thank you for invest investing in our community. Thank you for believing in the city. And please, bring more folks to come down and help us out. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'd now like to, uh, I, I, uh, because of the Navy hat, I will just tell you I spent 26 months on a destroyer in the engineering department in my youth, and it was a really remarkable experience. And Jeff Thompson and I also bonded over this. Jeff, do you have work? work? Come up and uh, say a few words, our, our ward counselor. Another Navy man. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's really great to be with you all this morning. You know, over the last uh, few years, I've had multiple opportunities to tour this building. I saw it, uh, as uh, Moises said, you know, in, in a really disarray uh, when you took it over, Ted. But I've always saw the, um, the potential in this building. And then as I recently toured this building, uh, Ted, you have far exceeded my expectations. This is a gorgeous building. Um, I know it took a little longer uh, than you would like it to be. This wasn't easy, but you persevered. And so that's a testament to you, to Jeff, um, and to the whole Concord Square development team. And I know you're not born and raised in Brockton, Ted, but you are a fighter, sir. <laughs> and we appreciate oh, you. And we just appreciate your continued commitment uh, to our city. And I wish you tremendous success in this development. I did want to ask, uh, are there any residents here uh, that, that reside in this building? Um, any residents today? Well, I just, uh, if you're hearing me, um, I want to welcome you to the city of Brockton. I want to thank you for choosing our community to live. And I, uh, you will not regret, regret that decision. So thank you, thank you all. Thank you, thank you Councilor. Um, you know, the, the thing I want to express is that I've, uh, this has been a long process and I've ended up making a lot of friends and it means a good deal to me. Uh, to take something like this on in the early days when we're just starting to think about it, there has to be an enormous amount of trust because there's so many problems that have to be solved day after day, week after week. And if there isn't adequate trust at the beginning, it doesn't happen. And so here I am, um, eight and a half years ago, I was sitting at a table right there with the owner of the building, commencing this process in August of 2015, if you can imagine that. And first there was a joint venture agreement that was signed and then it was breached. And then after that, there was some discussion and then there was a letter of intent that was signed. And then the PNS did not get signed. And then there was this process with the Redevelopment Authority that um, uh, took quite a while, but we ended up, the Redevelopment Authority ended up taking the building by eminent domain, which was really quite a remarkable thing to happen. Um, in the process, there was litigation. It took us two years to get through the litigation. It was a very painful time. 
COVID was right in the middle of this. We finally solved the litigation. Uh, we got the building. The tenant moved out. The former owner moved out. It took us a year to get the planning and the financing together. We started construction. And it's, we had COVID. We had supply chains issues. It has been a difficult process, but here we are. And the building is in great shape. Um, we're, we're very proud of it. And uh, uh, I, I just want to emphasize uh, the friendships that grew out of all of this, both with city officials and with our entire team, which is a lot of people, as you will see. Um, I'd like to recognize now my partner in this, well, Jeff Slosberg. Looks like it's all good. Jeff, where are you? Way over here. Okay. Well, that's, there we go. And his wife, Naomi, who's over here, who's put up with all the difficulties we've had over the years. We have our two staff people here, Fahid Mashmas Army. Fahid, where are you? And Sean, Stan, Sean Sanders. Um, so there was a huge, oh, and the, the next person I'd like to recognize is Rob May, who day after day has been masterminding the process of downtown Boston. So one of the key, one of the key factors in our financing is state historic tax credits, which is a terrific program, but it is enormously arduous to get the money. And the Secretary of State requires that we make a new application every three times a year. And so we started in January of 2016, and we applied every single three months, three times a year after that. And every application required letters of support. And it, was, it got tedious after a while, but there are a whole lot of people who were enormously helpful with that. Uh, Councilor Thompson was able to get signatures from all of the city councilors uh, every time, so everybody was on board. Um, uh, Chris Cooney from the Metro, Met, from Metro South was enormously helpful. Mary Waldron and her team generated two letters every time for us. We were enormously grateful for that. Uh, it was quite a process. Uh, and we thank you for everyone. Um, the litigation, enormously difficult. Jim Burke, where are you? I want, Jim, I want you to, Jim is in the back over here. He worked with us not only on the litigation, but on zoning and every other issue that comes up with the city and was very helpful. Two other lawyers helped with the litigation. Sandra Reclean, who represented the Redevelopment Authority uh, over here. And Sandy Letterman. Sandy, you are right here. So many thanks. Many thanks for all of that. Our architects who have done an enormously, a, a, a wonderful job is the architectural team. And here we have uh, Gary Kane, Steve Caswell. Why don't you stand up? I mean, you all, you really, they're the ones. Rob Curry. Rob, Rob, where is All right, so, and uh, Connie Fong is not here. Connie Fong did the interior design. I think she did an absolutely brilliant job on the building. She, she picked out the materials, she picked out, she figured out the colors. She came up with the wonderful artwork that you see on the walls. Uh, she really did a marvelous job. Jeff and I get credit for having listened to her and basically taken her advice. <laughs> um, and our construction company, Aberthaw Construction, Aberthaw has made a huge impact in Brockton because they did the building right here, they did the building next to it, they did this building. We're very grateful for their work. Um, you, you, you should, they're the ones who did the work, right? So you should stand up. Jeff, Jeff Alley, Sean Cashman, is Jeff, Sean, Sean, Sean Cashman, is George here? 
Georgie, George, yes. George. And Peter Tremblay. Peter Tremblay. So the final thing I'd like to say is that are not actually we're not quite that far along yet. But, <laughs> sorry. So um, we look at our work here as a, being a partnership not only with the city, but a partnership with the other developers. And there are a bunch of other developers here. And I would like all of you to stand up when I mention your name. So uh, first of all, Joffrey Anatole, who was not here on vacation. Joffrey really was the person who had the initial vision and built the first two projects and showed the kind of rents that people would pay in Brockton if you provide a first-rate product. So Joffrey gets a huge amount of credit. Uh, Joe Gonzalez, this Joe here. Yes. Joe, Joe did a building at 19 Main, and he's got two more buildings in the works, if not three or four. Um, Rob NeighborWorks, Rob Comey. Kim, Kim, Kim Doherty. And uh, Cindy Pendergast, all here. So they may have had an enormous impact on the downtown. Multiple buildings and lots more in the works. Uh, I don't, is John Bramer here from Trinity? Yeah, John? Oh, John. Thank you for being here. And of course, Trinity, Trinity really set the space. Trinity had the courage to go forward with the building right here before there was a parking garage before any of this had happened. And so they're the one, they were the real pioneers in this, in this effort. And we're very grateful for, to them and we like working with them. Dave Tregorth. Dave. <laughs> Building on Main Street. John and Paul Marion. Yes? I thought they were gonna be here. But Dakota Development, their partner is here. Uh, Mark Daigle and Steve Kaminsky. <laughs> Mark and I are old friends. We worked together for several years on a major project 30 years ago. We worked on some uh, other public service kind of issues, and they are going to be a terrific uh, presence here in, in Brockton. They've got the pro they're working with the Marion Brothers on the two properties at uh, 137 Main Street. Um, and uh, Greg Keefe from next door, right on the Gary McCall, you're not here. Greg, where are you? I know you're here. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. So, um, two other things. Is Maria Barrier here? Yes, Maria. And your mother? No, she couldn't make it. She couldn't make it. So, Maria's dad was Bob Barrier. Bob was the founder of the architectural team. A wonderful man. He, uh, we're talking going back to the late 60s. And the architectural team is without question the premier architectural uh, company that does historic rehabs. They've done tens of thousands of units and the quality that you see here is because of, of uh, all this experience and so forth. But even beyond that, Bob had a lot of confidence. Bob passed away a year ago which and we all regret. And so Maria, we're very happy to have you here representing him. And he, had a, he had a lot of confidence in the building and in us and was willing to really stick his neck out to make all of this work. So um, uh, now I'd like to uh, talk, let's see. Um, Phil Griffin. Phil, are you here? He couldn't make it today. Phil could not make it. Is Robert Jenkins here? I didn't see Robert. He, I thought he was going to come. Let me say a word about Phil and Robert and the Redevelopment Authority. It really, what happened is when the deals to buy the building fell apart, the Redevelopment Authority uh, made major efforts to, I mean, they were determined to find a way to get this building renovated. And when, uh, when it did not appear to be happening, they had the courage to move forward with an eminent domain taking. Uh, what I should say, Natalie, is Natalie here? Natalie Jean? Yeah. Nat 
project now. Yes, right. So Natalie is now running the redevelopment authority. And I would say that you know, very, very few cities in the Commonwealth in the last 20 years have been willing to step up and take a building by eminent domain and deal with all of the ramifications of that, which included two years of litigation, a great deal of legal expense, a great deal of pressure from various sources, and we're very grateful for that. And I am particularly grateful to Robert Jenkins for his confidence in Concord Square, and he convinced us that this was going to happen, and we spent a great deal of money and a great deal of effort before it did happen, which it comes back to this whole question of trust and, and, and being confident that if we make an effort, uh, the city and the redevelopment authority would, would match it. So with that, the financing for the project, believe it or not, was a little complicated. <laughs> So we, we started out with a loan from the Property and Casualty Initiative. They're not here today, I don't believe. Uh, they were not able to make it, but they loaned us the money to buy the building initially. And so it was a big step in that regard. We have a first mortgage from SVB, used to be Boston Private Bank, now SVB, which is um, uh, with a partnership with Eastern Bank. So the first mortgage and the construction loan are with Eastern Bank. We have an almost $6 million uh, HNEF loan, which is a Healthy Neighborhood Equity Fund. And uh, Modi Ture is here, right? Yes, Modi? Okay. So, <laughs> and, and we have equity from state historic tax credits and federal historic tax credits, which was provided by Fawcett Company. And John Sorrell is here and is going to say a few words. So, Peter. From S this is Peter Hollins. Yes. We've been working with Peter since we oh, early, early on. Yeah, it's a long time, yeah. A long time, yes. So congratulations, David. Yes. Thank you. Hey, uh, Peter Hollins from Silicon Valley Bank, a division of First Citizens Bank is what we're called now. We used to be Boston Private when we first started with this thing. Um, and it's been, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm proud to be here. It all revolved, it's always revolved around Ted and Jeff. And I think um, we are so grateful that they've man <clears throat> managed to pull this off after all of the troubles and uh, experiences that they've gone through. So let's give them one more hand right now of <laughs> Ted and Jeff. Because as many of you know, you know, Ted is a legend in uh, community development circles in the state and in the region. He's been around for a while and he was responsible in some ways for, for example, chapter 40B being 40 implemented. R. 40 R. 40 R. R. Yeah. Well, you know, you were behind a little bit of 40B too. You had no. some, some concepts there. Anyway, he's, no, no, he's no, being no, modest. <laughs> just, just accept it. <laughs> um, anyway, it's been a pleasure to work with him. They've gone through a lot and they persevered throughout it. Uh, so we are glad to be involved with our partners, Eastern Bank, you know, Mei Chen is here, who's our frequent partner um, in financing community development activities in this region. You know, a hand for you over there. And, uh, you know, as Silicon Valley Bank, a division of First Citizens Bank, you know, there was the events of last March, which many of you remember, where Silicon Valley Bank went under and now its assets have been purchased by First Citizens Bank. But we're back. We're back doing community development lending like this, like we did with Trinity Financial's first investments and uh, development across the street that Ted was referencing. So we're glad that that is behind us and we're going to be doing good things like this into the future. Um, I want to identify the person who's really did the heavy lifting in the early stages for my bank on this, Andrew Flink who is now working for Webster Bank doing community development lending. And, uh, you know, he had the vision communicated by Ted and Jeff of how this would work. And we underwrote it, you know, really aggressively. And so far, so good after seven years or whatever the heck it is. So uh, we're, we're optimistic about how it'll turn out from now on. I also want to identify Kevin Porras, my current colleague, who is doing the heavy lifting on the conversion of this as it finishes construction and moves into its term period phase. So, Kevin, thank you very much. So that's, uh, I, th 
uh, that's that's what, this is what we do. We try to make investments that are uh, going to result in development in areas that are ready for it. And Brockton, there's a lot going on here, and so we're looking forward to be coming back here many times. Thanks very much. You know, I would. <clears throat> Massachusetts has. Um, has the best education system in the country. Now, I know Brockton's got some current difficulties. I have no doubt in my mind that in a couple of years they will be resolved. We have the best education system, we have the best healthcare system, and I believe that we absolutely have by far the most robust system for building affordable housing and market rate housing. This is really market rate housing, but it's affordable compared to Boston. And so, this, what I'm going to tell you next is an example of how that works, which is that uh, in the spring, after we, after we got the litigation resolved, we had a financing plan. The financing plan included HDIP tax credits. Well, the state ran out of HDIP tax credits in the spring of 2021, and all of a sudden there's $2 million we don't have for the deal. So Jeff and I spent some time thinking about how we I mean, we had, a, we had a gap to fill. And it, it, then we thought, we had already had some discussions with the Healthy Neighborhood Equity Fund, which is a, a joint venture between the Conservation Law Foundation and the Mass Housing Investment Corp. And it's a, uh, I'll let Modi tell you more about it, but it is a, uh, it's a program that provides uh, basically mezzanine equity or debt that gets a return that's much less than real equity has to, than, than market rate equity has to get. And therefore, it's more expensive than a first mortgage, but it's a lot less expensive. So we made an application to MPIC, I think, the last week of May in 2021. And I can and we they we went through a process with them, and I am here to tell you that in six weeks we had board approval for a six million dollar loan. So to say that we're grateful for that because it made the deal work. I mean, we would not have made the deal work. Uh, it's an understatement. I'd like to introduce Modi Ture, who is the president and CEO of MHIC, and also responsible, therefore, for the administration of this program. Congratulations, this is a fantastic uh, project. As we all know, these projects, it takes a village, let alone a team. Um, I always love hearing the mayor of Brockton talk, because every time I leave listening to him, I start looking on Zillow, trying to find a place here. But um, he's, a great, he's a great salesman for the city. Um, this project is great. I mean, doing a project like this in the middle of COVID, I used to be a real estate developer before this, and my last project started and then ended in, in COVID, and I lost all my hair for it. <laughs> but you've kept your hair, so you are, you're clearly doing better. Um, MHIC uh, has been around for 34 years, and we were just happy to do this project uh, with you. And all of our partners here, quite frankly, uh, SVB, Eastern, um, it's every city has its own alphabet soup to get these projects done, and so we're really thankful for those partnerships. Um, I want to say thank you to our team. Uh, Carrie, who's here, please raise your hand. Uh, and then we've got David in the back, who's here as well. And, and we Cameron, who I uh, call Killer Cam. Cam, raise your hand. Um, <clears throat> And then we also have uh, Alex from the Conservation Law Foundation, please. please um, this project sits at the center of what our uh, HNEF fund does, quite frankly. We've had two funds. The first one was $21 million, and the second one was, we closed at around $42 million. And it's really about investing in cities like Brockton, in areas like this, with close proximity to uh, public transportation, and healthy food services and walkability, and that's what we invest in. But more importantly, we invest in people, um, and you guys are just just great A people, and so we really appreciate that. I also want to say thank you to the development team and to the contractors for not just in the investment in the building, but the investment in the people. This project had, I believe, 65 <coughs> excuse me, 65 hours of um, uh, develop of uh, uh, workers of color work on this project which is amazing. That represented almost $3.7 million. Um, 
65 percent. 65 percent of the people working on this project were people of color, which represented about 3.7 million dollars. And then 22 percent of the contractors were uh, MBEs, minority business enterprises. And that. Yeah. <laughs> That is, that is no small feat, and that is a true commitment uh, by both the developer and the contractor to do that. So thank you guys for that. Um, with that, I'll pass it back, but congratulations again. All right, I realized that I made a mistake, and I left out one of our developers in Boston, which is Onyx Development, and Shabnam Mashmasharmi Shab is working, working on 36 Main Street, right next to our property at, at Petronelli. So we're happy to have you here. Thanks for coming. And uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, and the fi uh, John Sorrell, uh, this would not have worked without the state and federal historic tax credit. I think they are providing around $7 million of equity for the project. So it was a big piece of it. And it's a, to say that it's complicated is an absolute understatement. I, I, you know, I'm old school. I have a hard time reading complicated documents on the computer. So I printed the documents I needed to understand this deal. Uh, most of it double-sided pages, and the binder is that thick because of the complexity to get all the money to move through the process. So John, if you just John is the our point is the point person for Foss. And Associates, a San Francisco company, and they have been, they have provided and are providing the equity for the project. The tax credit. Thank you, Ted. I was hiding behind the column hoping you wouldn't see me. Um, I'll keep this short. Nobody ever wants to hear from the money guys. Um, I, you know, Foss, Foss has invested over $200 million in the last four years. Uh, in New England, in the New York State, and Pennsylvania, uh, including these deals, um, all on behalf of institutional uh, clients. All of our clients are insurance companies and occasionally large banks. Um, every one of those deals in Buffalo, or Rochester, I was in the Rochester airport watching it snow Friday afternoon, Albany, um, Brockton, everybody has the same um, issues surrounding supply chain interruption and resulting time delays. Um, there's an old adage that time kills deals. Um, it, it's impossible to overstate the, the cascading difficulties that Jeff and, 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 uh, uh, and, and Ted overcame in the last two years, um, several of which, frankly, were uh, existential threats to the developments being successfully uh, completed. Um, not only have uh, any number of the people in this room invested significant capital in, this, in both of these projects to see them through, but Ted and Jeff themselves have put their own money to work, um, you know, because time kills deals. So I just want to thank Ted and Jeff for the opportunity to, uh, to be here and, and to have made this investment. Our institutional clients, there are three of them involved in this, um, are, uh, are thrilled to be part of this. Um, and it's just, to all the developers in the room, you know, you bet the farm every time you do one of these things, and uh, our hats are off to you. So thank you. Thank you, John. Well, it's been a pleasure. I think we've done a pretty good job. We're wrapping, I'm ready to wrap up. We're ready to cut the ribbon. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here. And again, it's wonderful to be here in this situation, to have the project done, to have people living in the building, to really becoming part of the city. Uh, very exciting, the plans. I, I, just have to, I just have to give Rob May a shout out here. This, well, here's the point. Number one, the re Natalie and the Redevelopment Authority have signed an agreement with someone to work on the CSX yards that could be a thousand units, right? This is not going to happen tomorrow or the next day, but we're confident it's going to happen. That's number one. Number two, Rob has got a very far-sighted form-based code revision in process here in the city that's going to make permitting and planning projects much more predictable and much more flexible and much easier to make the process work. It's really a very, uh, very far-sighted thing and it's gonna be very helpful for down the road. Thirdly, 
Main Street ultimately is going to be two ways, with wider sidewalks, with more bike lanes, uh, it'll slow traffic down, and hopefully that will enable the mayor and the redevelopment authority and the city council and everybody else working on the problem to bring more retail and more activity to Main Street, but I, and I think it will. And finally, there is a proposal in the city for a business improvement district that has been vetted and is in process. And once that happens, there will be people on the street making sure that the street is clean and when there are issues on the street that they're dealt with. Uh, and I should, I guess I should say the, the final thing is that the uh, homeless shelter, which is now on North Main Street, is moving away from North Main Street, away from the downtown, out to the Veterans Hospital area near Route 24, where there will be more services available, but it also means that it should improve the environment in the downtown as well. So all of this is enormously impressive and is, I would say, enormously helpful in our efforts when we go out to investors and say, look at Brockton today and look at what we've done, but also think about what Brockton is going to be like in 10 years because it's not going to be the same. It's going to be a different place. So we're thrilled to be part of that process. And we really thank everybody here. I think everybody here helped us do it. So thank you all very much. Um, we're going to do the ribbon cutting. Then you can make your way up to the seventh floor. There's three apartments available. Open up there. Go down to the basement. Look at our fitness center. Uh, take another look at our leasing center. By the way, the leasing center has a mural about Brockton. There's a piece of original artwork right in the entryway that is a, a sculpture that shows the streetscape in 1890. And if you look around, right adjacent to that is a map of the city in 1890, so you can actually see where the different pieces are. So we've tried to, uh, and also I'm sure you notice, make sure you notice that the, the large marble directory that's right around the corner that we found, and Jeff actually was the one who glued it to the wall. That's, that's the wrong word. Uh, but it was a weekend effort and um, it worked. It was quite complicated. The thing weighs three or 400 pounds and so it was not an easy proposition. So, Chris, let's, let's do the ribbon cutting. Photographer, we're looking at. Raise your hand if we're, we're looking at you. One, two, 